Greetings, Earthlings. Today I'm back with a review of a brand new broadcast dynamic microphone from Universal Audio. That's right, Universal Audio has just released a broadcast dynamic that is the SD1 or Standard Dynamic 1. If you are interested in this microphone, it will cost you around $300. Like always, I'll throw some links in the description down below. Also, for the majority of this review, I'm running directly into the Focusrite 18i20 2nd Gen, gain set at around 445. I will not do any kind of post-processing, but I may have to boost it a little bit in post, so check the doobly-doo to see what a diddly did. And yes, a little bit later, we will be running into a universal audio interface and running through the audio presets. But now let's talk about what comes in the box. Of course you are going to get the microphone. It will come with a windscreen already installed. You'll get a 5 8 to 3 8 inch microphone stand adapter and a tiny bit of documentation. Then as far as the build quality, I only have one complaint about this thing, and that would be the switches on the rear. They just don't instill confidence, they feel a bit weak, and I imagine if you get a little bit too aggressive with them, one of them might snap off. But the entire body is made out of metal, and if we remove the foam windscreen, you can see this looks a lot like a Shure SM7B, but it does have a really firm metal grill, which has no give to it. You do have a metal mount. The screws on it are going to be metal as well. The mount has 5 8 inch threading, and you do get that 5 8 to 3 8 inch microphone stand adapter. On the rear of the microphone, you will find the XLR port as well as those two switches that I have a little bit of a concern about. One is a high pass filter, just like the SM7B, and the second is a presence boost filter, also just like the SM7B. And finally, if it does matter to you, this microphone is manufactured in China. Then as far as the specs of this thing, it has a cardioid polar pattern, a frequency response of 50 Hz to 16 kHz, a sensitivity of around negative 58 dB, an impedance of 200 ohms, a high pass filter at 200 Hz, and a presence boost between 3 and 5 kHz. Now I am rotating around the SD1 to 90 degrees so you can hear the off-axis rejection and coloration. We'll continue around to 180 degrees. Here's the rear of the mic. Continuing around to the second 90 degree angle. Here we are. And then rotating and ending at the front of the microphone. Now let's go ahead and test the plosive rejection of this thing. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Now I'm right on top of the microphone to exaggerate the proximity effect and here is how it's sounding. Now I'm about three inches off of the mic with it angled at the corner of my mouth and here is how it's sounding. Now we're about one foot away from the SD1, about two feet away from the SD1, and about four feet away from the Universal Audio Standard Dynamic 1. Now I am typing on a keyboard with Gatoron Blue switches to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it rejects. And for the gaming folk, now I am typing on the SAD W and spacebar keys. Now here is how the microphone sounds in a well-treated room about three fingers away in the neutral EQ mode. And here is how the microphone sounds in a completely untreated room on the neutral EQ setting. And now because this microphone would be really difficult to get in a shock mount, I'm going to go ahead and tap on my desk to see how much of that noise it can reject. And then I will tap on the boom arm. And now because I'm annoying, I'm going to tap on the body of the microphone to see if there are any kind of resonant frequencies. Now I want to see if the provided foam windscreen impacts the tone of the recording. So right now I'm a couple inches off. I have the foam windscreen installed and here is how it's sounding. And now I've removed the foam windscreen and here is how it's sounding. I am monitoring this in real time so it's hard to tell if there's a difference. Let me know in the comments down below if you hear a bit more top end with the foam windscreen off. 
And again, for good measure, here is how it sounds with the provided foam windscreen installed. And here is how it sounds with the provided foam windscreen taken off of the microphone. And now let's hear how the filter switches impact the recording. Up until now, I have had the EQ in the neutral mode, and this is how it's been sounding. Now I've turned on the high pass filter switch, and here is how it's sounding. You should hear quite a big drop in the lower frequencies. Let's go ahead and try the presence boost switch now. Now I have turned off the high pass filter and engaged the presence boost switch on this thing and here is how this is sounding. You should hear quite a big change in the upper frequencies. In my headphones real time monitoring again, I do hear a bit of sibilance and I got a complaint about that on a podcast I made with this. So that is the presence boost for you. And I imagine this is going to be the worst sounding version of this microphone. I still have the presence boost engaged and now I've engaged the high pass filter as well. Very little low end and a bit of a brighter top end, maybe a bit sibilant. There you go. Those are the filter switches on the microphone. All right, now I have the Universal Audio SD1 running through my Universal Audio X8 audio interface. You can see that I have my gain set at 50 decibels and I'm hitting between negative 18 and negative 12 dB if I get a little bit excited. This is the level I would set it at and here is how it sounds running through a Universal Audio interface. But now we have the interesting part, so I'm going to go ahead and click on my inserts tab and this will pull up all of my presets. We are going to go into UA Mic Apollo Channel Strip Presets, and here are all of the presets that are available for the SD1, as well as the SP1. The SP1 is the small diaphragm condenser. We're not gonna be looking at that because we are not using that mic. So let's go ahead and scroll up. We are not going to go through every single one of these. First thing we'll do is look at the SD1 lead vocal channel strip. And this is what we get for the lead vocals. I'll go ahead and shut off the reverb. We have the UA610. Then we have a precision channel strip, which is mainly doing EQ. Then we have the 1176 compressor. We're not hitting that at all. Let's go ahead and increase the input. Hey, hey. Now we're getting a big bit of compression. And here is the reverb plugin that you get. That's the lead vocal channel strip thing. Now I have switched over to the spoken word setting. Again, we are using the UA610, which is emulating one of Universal Audio's classic tube preamps. Then we are running into the Poltec EQP1A, a little bit of boost in the low, a little bit of boost in the high, and then we have the compressor, which is <laughs> four to one ratio, which I like. And we're hitting the compressor pretty hard. Negative 5, negative 7 dB of gain reduction. And that is the spoken word setting, the one that I would use of the presets. And the last preset we're trying is the SD1 podcast setting. And goodness gracious, that's a lot of low end. If we look at this again, 610 preamp, seems like that's going to be the pre that you're getting. We use the EQ. EQP1A again, massive boost in the low end. I would just roll that almost all the way back because yikes. And then the compressor, 12 to 1 ratio with negative 7 to negative 10 dB of gain reduction. Very aggressive here. Not my favorite, but it's a preset. You can play with it and get whatever kind of sound you want. Those are a couple of the presets. Hope that was helpful. Now, like we always do, we're going to do a quick spoken word comparison between the microphone that we're reviewing and a bunch of its competitors on the market so we can see how it stacks up against the competition. And for this review, or for this comparison rather, I will have the SD1 and the neutral EQ mode. We'll start on the SD1. I am three inches off. The EQ is in neutral. My gain is set at 445 on the focus right. And here's how it sounds. Let's jump to the first mic. First up, I am on the Behringer XM8500. This goes for $20 to $25, three inches off, gain decrease to four o'clock, and here's how it sounds. Let's jump back and do a bunch more of these. Back again on the SD1 for a quick palate cleanser. Here is how it sounds, 300 bucks, nothing has changed. Next microphone. Now I am on one of the most famous microphones of all time, the Shure SM58. 
This goes for around $100, 3 inches off. Gain set at 430, and here is how this compares against the Universal Audio SD1. Let's do a bunch more. Again, here is how the SD1 sounds, get a good feel for it, and let's jump to the third microphone. Now we are on the SE Electronics V7. This is a $100 Super Cardioid handheld dynamic microphone, 3 inches off, gain set at three, 4 o'clock. 4 o'clock, that's correct. And here's how it sounds. Make sure to check the lower third so you can see how much I boost each of these in post. And let's jump back to the Universal Audio. All right, we're back on the Universal Audio SD1. Nothing has changed. Let's jump to another comparison. Now we are on the MXL BCD1, which is MXL's broadcast dynamic microphone. I am three inches off of this. My gain is set at four o'clock. And here is how this sounds. Did I say this goes for around $150? That's enough, let's jump back to the UA. Would you believe me if I told you we are on the Universal Audio SD1 because we are, and here's how it sounds in the neutral EQ mode, let's jump to another mic. Now we are on the Rode Procaster, which is a broadcast dynamic, which goes for around $230. I am three inches off, my gain is set at 445, and here's how this sounds compared to the Universal Audio. Let's do a lot more of these. We are back again on the Universal Audio SD1 so you can hear how this sounds in between all of the comparisons. This is the SD1, next microphone. Now we are on the SE Electronics Dynacaster with the Dynamite engaged. My gain is set at around 11.30. I have the EQ switches set to neutral. This costs around $290 and here is how this compares to a microphone that costs $10 more. Let's go ahead and do a lot more comparison thingies. I believe this is the seventh comparison, but before we jump to that, this is the SD1. Let it wash over your ears and clean them out. SD1, next mic. Now we are on the Electro Voice RE320. I am three inches off. My gain is set at four o'clock. The reason I'm including this comparison is this is a one-to-one -one comparison in terms of price. $300 versus $300. There you go, let's jump back to the UA and do more comparisons because we ain't done yet, boys and girls. All right, get ready for it. We are on the SD1 again, can you believe it? Here is how it's sounding, let's jump to another comparison. Now we are on the Shure SM7B which goes for around $400. EQ in the neutral mode, gain set at 100%. And here is how this compares against the Universal Audio SD1 which looks shockingly similar to the SM7B with a few minor changes. What do you think? Let's jump back and do two more, I think. I bet you haven't got enough of me and you haven't heard me on this microphone enough, so this is how I sound on the SD1. Three inches off, neutral EQ, gain at 445. Here is how it sounds. Next mic. Now we are on the Electro Voice RE20, 3 inches off, a gain set at 430. This costs around $450. I do not have the EQ switch engaged. And here is how this compares against a microphone that costs $150 less than this. Did I word that properly? I have no idea. Let's do one more. And if I am not mistaken, we have one more microphone to go, and I believe you all know what it's going to be. But first up, I am on the SD1. Let's jump to the last mic. And finally, we are on the Neumann U87 AI, which is a multi-pattern studio condenser microphone, which costs around $3,600, 3 inches off, cardioid mode, 48 volts on, and gain set at 11 o'clock. And here is how this compares to the SD1. This is just a control, it's not a fair comparison, but there you go. That is the U87 AI, and those are all the comparisons. Let me know in the comments down below which was your favorite, and let us jump to the music test now. <laughs>
I've got this universal mic and I don't care about my life I've just gotta find which mic will sound the best for you Hey, I did it again. I glided down to the last note But I wanted to go on re- No, I needed to go on record and make it abundantly clear The only thing I live for in this world is serving you, is helping you find the correct microphone. It's why I wake up in the morning and it's why I dread going to sleep at night because I can't bear, (laughs) I can't bear how much I love you. (laughs) I live for you. Please let me help. Let's go to, this is a weird bit. (laughs) Let's go to the conclusion. All right, for the remainder of this video, I'm going to be running the mic through the UAX8 so you can hear it a bit more. EQ on the mic is set to neutral, and I am using the spoken word preset. With that being said, I was not expecting much out of this microphone because there was a lot of drama around it because it turns out Universal Audio is using the same manufacturer as the Advanced Audio DM1. They just made a couple of changes to the design, but it's the same manufacturer. But I'm thrilled to say I don't hate it. I know, it's just a glowing way to start the review. But as far as the pros, I did think it did a very good job at shock rejection. It avoided any kind of low-end rumble coming in from bumping of my desk as I punch my boom arm. I did also find it did a respectable job at background noise rejection. Plosive rejection wasn't the greatest, but I do think it's incredibly manageable as well. And then the standout here would be how clear the midsection is. I think they are attenuating a bit there, but it is a very clear sounding midsection. And then as far as cons, I wasn't the biggest fan of either of the EQ switches. I found the high pass filter to be too aggressive and the presence boost made it sound a bit too top heavy and sibilant. And I also have concerns about the build quality of the switches. They feel very weak as though they might break if you get a little bit heavy handed with them wasn't a big fan of those. And the second con stems from the presets that come with this. I'm sure some people will absolutely love what they get directly from the presets, but I think they're going to need quite a bit of tweaking. And the main issue I have with this is it's limited to universal audio interfaces that use console software. So if you're buying this, hoping to get those plugins, you will not get access to those plugins or those channel strip presets unless you're using an interface like the Universal Audio X8, the Universal Audio Twin, or the UA Solo. It won't even work on the Universal Audio Volt. It needs the Shark processors in it, so it really limits who's going to get that benefit. And then as far as my overall thoughts and opinions of this microphone, on the electric guitar, I think it offers some very usable tones. I had no issues with muddiness in the lower frequencies. The midsection is definitely not that dominant. I feel as though they are attenuating a bit. It's just not going to be a very mid-forward or punchy sound. And then you get to the top end, it does come across a little bit sizzly, and it's not the most smooth, but overall I found it very usable, unless I got to a really piercing upper register of the guitar. Then on the acoustic guitar, I was pleasantly surprised with this thing. The lower frequencies do have a bit of heft to them, but it doesn't come across boomy. It also has a bit of a less forward midsection, and on acoustic guitar, I think frequently that sounds really good. Then you get to the top end, and I think that's where this really stands out because for a dynamic microphone, it comes across very lively, very articulate, and I really enjoyed the upper frequencies on the acoustic. Next up for singing, I had no issues with this thing whatsoever. The low end wasn't anemic or weak sounding, but it also wasn't too forward or muddy or unclear. Then as far as the mids, they're definitely not in your face and maybe even a little bit recessed. So if you want that mid forward and punchy sound, you will need to EQ a bit of that back in or just look elsewhere. And then in the treble and air frequencies, I hear a good bit of articulation there, as well as a bit of shimmer to it, which I think adds some nice excitement for singing vocals. And lastly, for spoken word, I enjoyed it the most in the neutral mode. I thought the presence boost made it sound a bit too forward, a bit too top-heavy and sibilant, and the high-pass filter made it sound a bit too weak. 
really only enjoyed it in the neutral mode. The low end doesn't come across too heavy or muddy or unclear, but it does still have a nice amount of weight to it. The mids are a bit recessed. They are definitely not too forward, and that leads to a very clear sounding midsection without it sounding overly scooped. And then the top end is really nice. It offers a bit of articulation, very clear, and a little bit more top heavy, I would say, but it doesn't come across too over boosted like a lot of dynamics that do try to add that treble and air boost. So for spoken word, I think this is a very nice option in this price point. And to wrap up, would I recommend the Universal Audio SD1? Yes, I would, if you enjoy the sound of it right out of the box. I do think this offers a bit brighter of a sound than a lot of other dynamics, and it's also not as much of a mid-forward sound compared to a lot of other dynamics. If that's the sound that you're going for, then I think this is a really interesting option. I know this sound profile will be flattering for some voices and sound sources, and some people will absolutely love the way that they've shaped the sound of this mic. But we're not done because I do want to add a caveat here. I personally wasn't that impressed with the presets. I don't think it made the microphone sound incredible. Yes, they are jumping off points, but I think anybody who has a universal audio interface is going to have a better channel strip that they like better. So I think that if you're looking at this and viewing the channel presets as a big driving factor for you, it doesn't make that much sense because I don't think they're that great. And especially if you don't use a universal audio interface and that's a selling point for you, it makes zero sense because you won't be able to use them. You need a universal audio interface, not including the Volt, like the X8 Twin X Solo, one of those, to be able to access and use these plugins. So if you don't use universal audio interfaces and that's why you're buying it because you want those presets and channel strips, don't do it. Doesn't make sense because you can't use them. Have I driven that home enough? I think I have. That's all that I've got for you today. I'm not going to ramble on. If this video was fun, interesting, or helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Hated it. Big old thumbs down. These people over here are amazing and help me bring you these videos. You can be one of them by joining for $5. Click that join button or patreon.com slash podcastage. That's all I've got. I love you. I will talk to you next week. Bye-bye.